Advertising is the necessary evil in entertainment. Sure, the advertisements themselves can be kind of annoying and they almost always interrupt the flow of whatever we're watching, whether it be on TV, streaming, or a high quality YouTube video. But sometimes, these advertisements will get lucky and become extremely beloved figures, ones that, for the most part, people will always look forward to seeing. Things like the Budweiser Frogs or the Geico Gecko have become so beloved and iconic in these recent times. And these characters in the advertisements can even become synonymous with the brands themselves. And of course, when they become so beloved, they end up bringing a lot of attraction and more importantly, money to the business. However, that can sometimes work in the opposite direction. And not in the way you think. I'm not talking about ads that are so hated they end up doing the company in. No, I'm talking about ads that are so beloved they end up destroying the company. What am I talking about? Well, let's talk about a little company called ITV Digital. In the mid-90s, the British government was trying to experiment with new terrestrial digital television. What is that? Basically broadcasting television through radio signals. And there were two companies that really wanted to take advantage of this new technology. Sky and ITV. Both were already juggernauts of British television, and both wanted a slice of that brand new digital pie. Both of them ended up releasing their own digital carriers. Sky released Sky Digital first, and then shortly after, ITV released On Digital. On Digital will be the one we'll be focusing on today. When it debuted in 1997, it had an enormous eruption of popularity. Starting off with a giant kickoff party with a ton of celebrities and hosts, people got really attached to On Digital really quickly. Plus, all the millions of pounds they spent in advertising didn't hurt either. So right out of the gate, it looked like Sky Digital and On Digital would be in a neck-and-neck -neck competition. But that was put to a stop very quickly. On Digital's customers were not at all happy. Amongst the many problems were the poor channel selections and the extremely terrible reception issues. The signals they used were so weak that oftentimes the program would just not come on or lock up. And this would be a regular occurrence according to a lot of customer reports. The turnover rate was staggering and On Digital was quickly in the second place position in a two competitor field. And after spending way too much for the royalties of a bunch of B-list football, or if you're American, soccer leagues, they began to suffer even more. Because why would they want to watch a bunch of B-list teams that nobody really cares about when they could watch the high-grade ones on Sky? According to On Digital's higher-ups, sometimes the games would be viewed as little as 1,000 people. It got so bad that the company actually had to reach out to the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom for assistance. It was clear here that On Digital was on a very fast track to death. So they needed to do something quick. But what could they do? Well, they decided to rebrand. They changed the name from On Digital to ITV Digital in order to get the ITV brand name out in the public. That way, with the giant name of ITV behind them, they were hoping that a lot of the people would be able to latch onto it. After all, it has name recognition. And in order to coincide with their brand new name, they decided to come up with a brand new ad campaign. This is the ITV Digital Monkey campaign. Actually, it is important to me. I'm asleep, Al. Just run it by me one more time. No, it's boring. For safety purposes. The last time. <laughs> Good monkey. Once upon a time, there was a big thing called On Digital. One day, it changed its name to ITV Digital. The end. A good night. <laughs> It stars Johnny Vegas, playing the lovable, chair-bound doofus Al, who loves nothing more than eating crisps, or chips, and watching his ITV digital box. He's always accompanied by his loyal sidekick, Monkey. That's both his species and his name. The voice of Monkey was provided by Ben Miller, and the puppet itself was created by the Jim Henson Workshop. Each commercial had Monkey and Al either getting in some sort of argument, or getting in some sort of little crazy adventure, each one revolving around the different features that ITV Digital had to offer. The writing was fast, the jokes were quippy, and everyone loved the personalities of these two, especially Monkey. And ITV Digital saw this and really ran with it. More commercials and even merchandising came out. Not kidding. These little monkey plushes you see on your screen were given away free when you subscribed to ITV Digital. Doesn't matter for how long, they just gave them to you. 
and Monkey became so popular that these things would go for about 100 to 200 pounds on eBay during the holiday season. Yeah, looks like ITV Digital has a real big hit on their hands, right? Exactly. Monkey's advertisements gave them extremely high numbers in sales. But that was the problem. See, when On Digital transformed into ITV Digital, the only things they changed were the name and the advertisements. All of the problems like the bad channel selection, the poor radio signals, and a bunch of soccer games that nobody wants to watch were all still present. But what does this have to do with Monkey? Because Monkey was so popular, the ITV Digital customer base expanded extraordinarily. So many people were buying subscriptions of the service, but few of those people would come to stay. It was estimated that around a third of their customer base would leave soon after. This would not provide them with much money at all. But there's even worse aspects. Word of mouth began to spread. People would talk about how ITV Digital was very inconvenient and had nothing to offer that Sky Digital didn't have already. They couldn't even get their installation done properly. They'd always boast about how you could just plug it in and go or even get it on the same day as you order it. But often there would be way too many problems with the signal and you'd have to call a repairman a whole bunch of times anyways. What was even the point? Monkey may have drawn everybody into ITV Digital, but he couldn't make anybody stay. And you can kind of tell as the commercials went on. They started off just by talking about some simple factors of the company. Then they started showing off some new features. Then in the last couple, they really got desperate and really tried to hammer home all of the amazing things that ITV Digital had to offer. Like its low installation price, or the fact that you could get it and put it into your TV on the same day. Monkey was still Monkey, and Al was still Al, but the damage had been done. Nobody trusted ITV Digital. And despite their huge push during the holiday season, tragedy would soon strike. The troubled television company ITV Digital is stopping broadcasting all its pay-to-view programs and laying off up to 1,300 staff. In March of 2002, ITV Digital filed for bankruptcy. They could not afford to keep themselves afloat any longer. They were already running on fumes anyways, but now it was time to be done. They had to lay off a whole bunch of workers and cut all premium channels from their lineup. The whole company would cease to exist in May of 2002. And that was the end of ITV Digital. Why did this happen? Well, for a number of reasons. One, there was a lot of piracy issues going on with the chips that they used. People could hack them and then get their premium content for free which, as we discussed, was already not very good. The second was that they paid way too much for those soccer teams. Nobody was watching them, and now they were already in a hole because of the huge amount of money that they gave them. But all of this could have been just forgotten if it hadn't been for ITV Digital's low user base. Like we've said before, Monkey was huge. For the brief bit he was on TV, he almost was a cultural icon. You could hardly find anybody who didn't love this little guy and his big blubbery sidekick. There's an old saying in advertising, there is no better way to kill a bad product than with good advertising. And Monkey certainly did that. They were losing subscribers faster than they were getting them in. And without their money, ITV Digital had to go. There were talks about making an actual spin-off show about Monkey, but they never went anywhere, although a pilot was rumored to be filmed. And thus, Ends the tale of Monkey and Al. Except, nope, that's not true. In the year 2007, the British tea company PG Tips saw the popularity of the ITV Digital Monkey advertisements, and they decided to make Monkey and Al their new mascots. So out of the blue, this happened. And in the liver! Hello, Al. The first commercial with Monkey and Al for PG Tips was very unique. Rather than actually focus on the brand, which only shows up about twice, it more talks about the character dynamic between Monkey and Al, even referencing the ITV digital debacle. I never got a chance to thank you. What for? Legging it when I needed a pal. I'm, I'm sorry, Al, but when that TV thing went belly up high, well, I was ashamed, Al. I just wanted to run away. 
Me too, me monkey chum. But I didn't. I stayed and faced the music. So? It's long and it plays like an actual story. And you know what? It's refreshing and actually kind of compelling to watch. And sure enough, from here on out, Monkey and Al were the new faces of PG Tips. Although I couldn't find if they're still being used today. The last Monkey advertisement posted to PG Tips' YouTube channel was debuted in 2016. Aside from that, no real information can be found if they're still around today. But that just goes to show you how popular Monkey actually was. He may have brought down ITV Digital, but he brought up PG Tips. Even though he caused a lot of disaster for his original company, this TV and tea-loving monkey ended up having a happy ending in the end. Well folks, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.